paused it. Okay, so so welcome, Karen. Welcome, Denise. I think Ella Ella had to leave, but that's okay. Perhaps she'll be back. So, um, as I was saying to Denise and Karen, well, and to you as well, Karen. My name is Christina, and um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. And really, um, you know, I'm going to actually share my screen so that you can see. And really, what we're going to talk about today is um, harnessing the power of Ayurveda and as well as habit science to, you know, really kind of develop good long-term healthy habits. I mean, we all want to feel better. There's always ways that we can improve. And, um, you know, there are things that you are doing that are great and, and maybe things that you would like to improve and, and all of that's okay. Um, so we're just going to talk a little bit about what are some of the things that Ayurveda says um, and how I like to pair it, you know, this thousand year old, um, these thousand year old practices in science with modern science and habit science and how to make it stick. So that's really um, where we are today. Just a few more people are joining now. So welcome, welcome if you're just joining. Um, so I'll tell you while we're kind of waiting for people to join in a little bit about myself. Um, so I, um, I was a management consultant. <laughs> um, so that meant that I worked very long hours, um, traveled all over the place, and it was a very stressful job. It was within the cultural sector, so it was really particular. Um, and that meant that, you know, it was really exciting, but there was a lot of stress. There were a lot of, there was a lot of change in my life. And so I found it really difficult that although I was practicing yoga and what I thought was, you know, really healthy eating habits and, and healthy habits, um, you know, there was still a lot of stress. There is still uh, a lot of problems in my life, you know, and a wake up call for me was when I turned 40 after I'd had my first daughter and um, couldn't I stopped, I, I completely, um, I'm just going to be fully disclosed, I stopped getting my period. And so I went to the doctor and it turned out that I was actually, I had an autoimmune disorder. Pretty common thing. I have um, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which means that my body is literally attacking my thyroid, which uh, regulates basically everything in your, in your body. Um, particularly metabolism, but also mood, temperature control, um, you know, your skin, like the, um, the oiliness of your skin, your hair, it, it's, it's global. Um, and, and, and obviously menstruation as well. So I was put on medication, which you essentially, once you go on it, you're on it for life. And I didn't love that idea. <laughs> Um, and so I, and I remember this so clearly, I booked myself onto, into a meditation retreat for a week. And this is when I was practicing yoga and I was doing things that I thought were healthy and they, and they were, um, hi Marcy, nice to see your face. <laughs> um, and so I booked it. So it was, a, it was in, um, Thailand and it was the, um, Thich Nhat Hanh, um, meditation retreat. So it's a Buddhist retreat where you really slow down. It's a mindfulness retreat. And I booked it in between a trip to China with my work and a certification that I was getting. So it's literally bookended um, in between these things, which kind of just signifies to me, or it reminds me of, you know, what I was doing. I was always going, 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 never stopped, um, which is what got me into this in the first place. But then I went there and um you know it was it was great you know i really slowed down i meditated we practiced yoga you know i clean vegan food made lovingly by monks <laughs> and i came back after my my trip to china and you know my work trip and all of a sudden they had to after one week they had to lower all of my medications or my the one medication that i was taking um for months though like, like it, and it took a year for them to get it back because, you know, the impacts of that one week were so dramatic. And that really kind of, I know that I, I've known for a long time, as I'm sure all of you know, and we're always being told that lifestyle has a huge impact on our health, right? But I didn't realize how quickly 
things could change. And then of course they changed back because I went back to my regular life. <laughs> um, but that was a starting point for me. I enrolled in yoga teacher training and then I was really lucky um, in that um, one of my teachers is an Ayurvedic practitioner who had been practicing Ayurveda her whole life. And so she introduced me to this thousand year old practice. So I wanna start before I go too much more, does, any, does everyone know what Ayurveda is or is anyone kind of new? Okay, Marcy saying no. What about you, Denise and Karen? You can just type no in the chat. I'm going to assume that some people don't know, some people do know. So Ayurveda is the sister science to yoga. So where yoga is really the purpose of yoga is the path to enlightenment. So it's about um, it's about the mind. It's about spirituality. You know, obviously there are yoga poses that um, help the body. The, pr the primary focus of Ayurveda is about body health um, so that you're physically able to um, practice yoga and so that you're feeling great in your body. So it encompasses um, the key to Ayurveda is really coming into balance. So they talk a lot about energy, but they also talk about um, balance. And so the idea is that if, for example, you, you know, it's very hot out you might want to balance that with cool things. So there's lots of different ways they do that. That's a really kind of simplistic way of describing it. And it's, you know, obviously a complex holistic system um, that's been around for about 5,000 years. Um, it is um, the precursor to many different um, holistic medicine practices. In fact, um, it was the impetus for traditional Chinese medicine. Um, so a lot of a lot of what came out of, you know, for example, the meridian lines and so on actually did start with Ayurveda. So it has all to say it has a really long history and a long um, influence. And um, so I started to study Ayurveda and I've started since then. So for the past seven years of playing it in my life, I've seen like huge changes along with the yoga practice. And so um, I'm now harnessing my background of neuroscience and psychology um, with Ayurveda to kind of how do we make these, we know what we know what many of the good habits are that we need to do, but how do we make them stick? That's always kind of the big question. Um, I find people struggle with. So that's what um, we're here to talk about. Um, so I'd love to just kind of turn it over to you guys and find out why you're here, like why intrigued you about this workshop. You can just- So unmute. I can start. I'm happy to start. Okay, Denise, go ahead. Um, so uh, I have some exposure to Ayurveda through yoga, I guess. I used to do yoga like three times a day sometimes. Um, and I was, you know, kind of trying to do daily habits and stuff um, and to lead a healthier lifestyle and stuff. And I don't know what happened the last three months. I just got derailed like June, July, August. Mm. Uh, I was, I, I think it was like, it was like a school year and I was working so hard at it and it's like, yeah. I just wanted to take the summer off. And now that September is coming, I just feel like it's a time for new beginnings and I got to get back on track. And my girlfriend sent me this actually <laughs> earlier today. And uh, so I signed up and I, I'm just looking forward to what you have to share. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing Denise. Does anybody else want to share? Um, yeah, I guess I'll share. Um, so yeah, I, um, I think through this pandemic, like it's just, I, I don't know everyone else, but, but I, I, I've been working from home and, uh, and I was, I'm, I went into a new job before the pandemic. Um, sorry, I don't know what, what that was. Uh, I went into a new job before the pandemic and it was to really to start a new program within an organization. And when the pandemic, and we were just about to like launch something, um, that is the result of this new program and the pandemic hit. And basically I just kind of turned what I was doing completely upside down. And, 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 I, and I just feel like I've been, you know, running at full speed, uh, ever since. Um, and, you know, I, 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 um, I turned 50 this year and I went actually to, because she couldn't go anywhere when you turn 50 you know, in the year of a pandemic, except there was a place, um, like a mindful retreat place, essentially, uh, you know, kind of spa retreat place 
And I, I was able to slow down in those three days that I was there. And I, got, I did a lot of yoga. I got back into yoga. I did yoga for years before, but kind of just work life, uh, home, family life, you know, interfered with a, a regular practice for me anyway. Um, and, and I really enjoyed those three days. And I actually felt like kind of Christina, the, the, um, the, uh, the kind of the, um, delayed effect of your, uh, of your retreat. I felt that with those three days that I had at this place and, but then I lost it you know? yeah. and I'm trying to kind of get back to these kind of regular patterns of, you know, doing yoga, exercising, and, you know, just taking a, a bit more balanced approach to life. Um, it, it's hard when you're in a, a, a place like, a, you know, in a, in a work environment where that's not necessarily conducive. Um, and so I'm trying to find that balance. I'm trying to find opportunities to get back to that balance. Um, yeah. So that's kind of why I'm here. Okay. Thank you, Marcy. And Karen, I know that you have already shared. I don't know if you wanted to add anything else. You don't have to at this point. <laughs> okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. I put together a little presentation. Just bear with me while it comes up. And let me know when you can see it. It says that I'm sharing now. Okay, you can see it. Okay, great. Perfect. Okay. So, so I've kind of said a lot of this. So I, so what I have found and Marcy, just speaking specifically to your point is that I'm not any less busy <laughs> than I was. Um, but I find that with the morning routine and with being kind of conscious and mindful of what I'm doing, um, I'm making time for the pauses in my life that I'm, and I'm recognizing when I need them. And I find that actually helps me to be more productive. It also reduces my stress. Um, I'm more fit and just more energized to kind of take things on. Right. And that's, I think, kind of what we all want. Right. I, you know, life isn't going to necessarily slow down, but we can, we can set boundaries and we can look at things and decide what do we want to go after. Right. And decide, you know, what is it that, um, you know, what are my goals and what is taking me towards our, my goals? And we can look at that in a holistic way. And I think we need to incorporate our health and our well-being into that. Um, and I think we, we realize this, but so it's almost like a strategic approach. Um, and so I find that the, the best way to start is just kind of building in a morning routine. And so that's why I focused on a morning routine. Um, so I guess I want to just ask you guys a little poll. Um, who here actually has a morning routine or, or, you know, maybe you had one and, and you don't right now, but does anyone, you know, I guess on a scale of one to five where one is or zero is no morning routine at all. And five is, you know, I have a really set morning routine that I really like that really kind of energizes me for the day and makes me feel um, awake and healthy and, and, you know, ready to take on whatever challenges come towards me. You can just type that number in the chat. So that would be a five and then zero would be the, the opposite of that. Okay. Yeah, a lot of threes. Okay, yeah. Okay, good. So I'm just moving to the next slide here. Um, so I wanna talk again about why flow and why, like where Ayurveda stands on this. If my screen will ever go forward. So basically, if you think about, eventually it will go forward, I think. Um, but in, okay, so yeah, so, so really the idea with Ayurveda, again, I said is balance. And part of that balance is attuning to what's going on in our environment and in the world. So attuning to nature's rhythms. And so whether that's the seasons, whether that's the, um, the circadian rhythm, you know, the night and the, the daytime, whether that's the, um, you know, the inhale and the exhale or the, the, the heartbeat, right? So there, there's always these rhythms that are going on. They're simple, they're powerful, they're practical, they're meaningful. And so 
we we ignore them <laughs> you know in modern life we just kind of go against their flow so we it, we stay up late at night and we eat late and then we go to bed um you know long after the sun has gone down and we wake up long after it's been up and um you know animals and plants consistently they instinctually follow these rhythms and we are not out of nature we are part of nature so um you know, it, it, it behooves us to actually pay attention to these energies, the moon cycles, and there's energies even throughout the day that if we align to them, life starts to flow a little bit more easily. We start to feel, we start to experience ease and well-being. We start to um, harness the energy that is inherent in that part of the day. And I know that sounds a little crazy, but Marcy, you've, you've felt it. If you've practiced yoga or if you've gotten up at certain times of the day, rather than burning the candle at both ends, you, you'll start to notice feeling in sync. Um, but the problem, there's a huge problem when we don't. So when we stay up late, when we kind of ignore the natural rhythms, there's a consequence. We, we gain weight. It affects our mood. Um, you know, who, who here has not slept well and feels really kind of cranky? Well, it's amazing how when we go to bed at, you know, a time that's right for us, and I'm not going to tell everyone to go to bed at seven o'clock or 10 o'clock, you know, it, it, there is a, there is an individual practice to this. Karen, do you have a question? I see your hands up. No, I was just oh. agreeing. Oh, that okay. Was All right. That was me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so it affects, so when we're not in this rhythm, it affects, it affects our well being. So, you know, we get things, even simple things that we think are just kind of happening. Like we don't understand why modern medicine doesn't always understand why, like allergies, for example. So in, so I used to have really terrible seasonal allergies and they are not completely gone, full disclosure, but um, they're almost completely gone. Um, and, and it's just, it's just through employing rhythms, right? I haven't really done anything else. We experience stress. We experience irregular sleep. It might affect our bowels. You might have poor digestion, um, elimination of waste. And this, right, this, this imbalance, all of those things are telling us that our body is out of balance. And the more we go out of balance, the more um, that will change. It, it leads to chronic disease. Okay. Um, and we can see that, like, I mean, this is from Stats Canada. It, you know, the statistic is from Stats Canada, 44% of adults over 20. <laughs> so over 20, not over 40, over 20 have some kind of chronic disease, whether it be hypertension, a mood disorder, um, heart disease, asthma, and you can link these things. There's been a lot of studies um, to link these things to a lot of the things that I was talking about. So asthma, uh, the children of asthma have been, are of, of parents who are stressed, have a higher rate of asthma. That have, I didn't say that very well. The, uh, the children of parents who rate very high, with high levels of stress have a much higher prevalence of asthma for example. And, and this can be seen with a lot of different things. Um, so the point is that there's like a serious cost to not paying attention to these things. Okay, I think I've already gone over who I am, so I'm going to not waste your time with that. But I just want to talk about some things that people do <laughs> that I find don't really work. So the first is an all or nothing approach. So kind of I'm going to do I'm going to be perfect, I'm going to eat perfectly. And, um, and then if I don't, you know, forget it, you know, I'm just going to give up. So, you know, summer comes and I want to have fun. And I just drop all my routines. It's okay, it happens, things change, right? I think that an all or nothing approach can lead to um, a lot of overwhelm first of all trying to be perfect and it can also feel you feel disappointed when you don't achieve perfection and um you know nobody's ever going to achieve perfection so so that's the kind of the problem with all or nothing incorporating too too many habits at once is also another thing so again it kind of goes into the all or nothing approach i'm going to eat well and i'm going to go to bed early and i'm going to exercise and i'm going to drink lots of water and then all of a sudden like you go into overwhelm and you feel like i can't do it and there isn't time in the day because we all have other things that are going on so i think that 
you know, incorporating too many things at once becomes a problem as well. Focusing on cutting out bad habits, I think is, um, it's a difficult one. So whatever we focus on, they say grows, right? When you pay attention to something, you're kind of giving it your energy and your time. And so when you're putting your attention to cutting something out, um, you're, you know, I'm not going to eat whatever, or I'm going to, you know, I'm trying to lose weight. So I'm not, I'm only going to eat salads and I'm not going to eat bad things. And you focus on not eating the bad things. If you focused on, I'm going to include a green, you know, a green smoothie with my lunch, or I'm going to include um, a walk, you know, sometime in the morning. It, you know, then you're focusing on good habits and all of a sudden you're not doing something else, right? Um, relying on motivation and willpower. So willpower is a muscle <laughs> that needs to be exercised and um, motivation. So, okay, the problem with relying on motivation is that there are periods of motivation where it's very high, you might be inspired, you listen to someone who's really, you know, inspiring, and they talk about their health journey, and it's amazing, and you want to be like that. And then the next morning, you wake up, and you're really, really tired. <laughs> And all of a sudden going for that run feels really hard and you don't want to do it. You can expect that you will have periods of low motivation. And I think you should expect that motivation will be low most of the time. So as long as we know that, then we can, we can work with that. Um, and setting goals. Who here thinks setting goals is a good idea? think so <laughs> yeah I you know like seriously I you know I love setting goals I'm, I was a strategic planner <laughs> you know I and then I think that there's lots that we can do so there's nothing wrong with setting goals but I think the point is when we focus on the goal so I think there's um so James Clear um who wrote the book Atomic Habits we don't have it here but he's a kind of a habit scientist and it's really he makes a really important point about that I'm just going to pull it up but he basically talks about how um there's an underlying assumption that um those who reach their goals have different goals for people who don't but all Olympic athletes want their goal is to win gold right? Um, everybody who goes in for a job interview wants to get that job. They have the same goals. Um, so that's one problem with setting goals is that, you know, sometimes we achieve them and sometimes we don't. But the other thing about it is that a goal is an instance in, in the future to work towards. So for example, let's just say um, I have a messy room and my goal is to clean my room. And so um, I, you know, I, get the motivation and I go and I clean my room and it's sparkling. But if I don't look at the different habits that led to that really sloppy room in the first place, I, it's just gonna be messy the next day, right? So I have to look at the underlying habits. So, um, so setting goals can be problematic. I'm not saying you can't have goals, but it's just, it's not the end all be all. So it's just a strategy that, that to kind of think about. So we already talked about what is Ayurveda. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about rhythms. So you've all probably heard about circadian rhythm. Um, but so so does anybody is anybody here not familiar with the term circadian rhythm? You can just type that in the chat if you're not. So circadian rhythm is the rhythm that I, without going into the science behind it, it's basically the body rhythm that um aligns us with the morning afternoon night cycle so the the day night the wake sleep cycle so we are diurnal animals which means that we are to be awake during the day and we sleep at night as opposed to you know a nocturnal animal like a cat that goes to bed at night and or sorry goes to bed in the daytime and sleeps at night i'm like my cat who's sleeping right now <laughs> the bed he's he but he is awake most of the night as well and so i guess it's important to um to to pay attention to these um because it it's in tune with our body's clock and so they determine your natural sleep cycle 
So when it's sunlight, it, it affects all the different hormones in your body. So for example, at noon, bile production, which is produced by your liver is strongest, and that helps you digest food because you're meant to be eating during the day as opposed to at two in the morning, right? Or at midnight. Um, and so it, it's essentially, it's the reason why I bring it up is that it's something that I like to kind of look at like the largest expanse that I can. A lot of these things are individual for people, but we're all humans. <laughs> and so as humans, we're all diurnal. And so we're meant to be sleeping at night and being awake during the day. And so that's kind of a general thing that we can, you know, apply to all humans. So that's kind of an easy, an easy thing to pay attention to. And it's also something that Ayurveda um, looks at. And they look at it, so you can look at, so here it talks about different things like body temperature, when you're most alert, when you're most coordinated. And Ayurveda has a circadian rhythm as well. And they call it um, the doshic clock. So they basically um, break everything into three different energies. So there's pitta, which is fire energy. There's vata, which is air energy. And there's kapha, which is water and earth. Or some say kapha. Um, my Ayurvedic teacher always said kapha. So, so that's what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say. But um, So it's basically, they break it down into these three different energies. Um, during different times of the day. And that allows you to kind of attune to nature's rhythm and something that the yogis have been practicing. So what they used to do is do a lot of different experiments to see, well, what works and what doesn't work. And this is where they, they kind of landed. So if you've ever woken up at like, you know, three in the morning or four in the morning and you're stressing, your mind is kind of going, that's because you're in the Vata time of the night. So your, um, your mind, that's the mind mode. And it's kind of where energy is, is dispersing. It's kind of going out and that's what's sort of happening there. Um, the Kapha time of day is with the, is associated with the rising and the setting of the sun. So if you think about downward energy, this is the time of like the body. So you really want to be paying attention to your body early morning, early evening. Um, and it's a period of kind of cooling. So there's cool energy there and declining energy. So it's a grounding time. It's when you're gonna feel the most grounded. Um, and there's different rules that you can apply. So if you think about, so between six and 10 is the Kappa time. So if we look at the evening time, and, and don't worry about all of these details, I'm kind of providing a lot and then we're gonna get more specific in tuner in but i just want to kind of give you the the theory behind it so between 6 p.m and 10 p.m is a kappa time of day so that's associated with the setting of the sun so if you think about downward energy it's the time when you're kind of coming down from your day so it's a time of bonding with family it's a time of um when you're starting to finish you should be finished eating um so that you can start to sleep. Basically, it's a preparation for sleep. Pitta, the fire energy, is the energy of digestion. So at nighttime, what's happening is you're digesting your day, everything that's happened. Um, but what you don't want to be happening is digesting the food that you ate like five minutes ago, right? You want to have some time so that your body can digest anything it didn't process earlier and also mental digestion. Vata is um, the mind mode. So this is where you're kind of, this is the dream time at nighttime. So that's from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. Um, so I won't get into a lot of that, but also, but I said pitta is the digestive time. So it's also at the time when sun is rising. And if you remember the circadian rhythm, that's also when bile is highest. So that's when you should be eating because that's when it's easiest for your body to digest. So back to routines. That's just a little bit of theory. I hope it didn't like kind of overwhelm you too much. And if you don't remember it in too much detail, that's okay. Um, so I said that, remember that uh, periods of motivation are going to be low <laughs> and willpower um, doesn't really work. It's a muscle. Willpower does work, but it's a muscle that needs to be exercised. So 
that's where routines come in. Okay. So a routine and the way I classify a routine is a habit that you've repeated over and over again so that it becomes routine and so that it becomes almost unconscious. 40% of our actions are not conscious decisions, but habits. So if you can harness those unconscious decisions, then you can take control of everything that you want. So motivation is what gets you started, but routine and habit are what keep you going. So how do we form these healthy routines is the question. So there's the three-step loop of habits. So the first thing is there's a cue. Something happens in your environment or in your mind to trigger, tells your brain something that you need to do. So let's say you come home from work and you're tired and you get a glass of wine and this is a habit you do, okay? So then the, the second, second step is the habit. So you drink the wine. Um, the third is the reward. So um, that's how your brain determines whether this is beneficial. So you get a feeling of release. You feel a little bit happy. It's a reminder that the day is over. You have that wine. So what if you want to um, break that habit? then you need to look at what the cue and you need to also look deeply at what the reward is, right? So I, if you recall, I said, focus on adding things in. So rather than thinking about not having that wine, think about, oh, what could I do instead? Well, I could plan to go for a walk. So when I get home from work, maybe I'll go for a mindful 10 minute walk or five minute walk. Um, so I worked with one woman who, um, she was a yoga teacher and, um, she, she was about, she, she was significantly overweight and she had a very stressful job, frankly, and, you know, not much time. And so we were working on building some habits and, and she was finding it really difficult to kind of incorporate them. And so one thing that we did was I had her do two minutes of meditation when she got home from work. So, you know, if she was tired, she could lie down. If her legs were sore, she could put her feet up. If she felt a little bit more energized, she, she could sit up. And she only did it for two minutes. That was all I asked her to do, not more than two minutes. Eventually, that practice became more. But what she did was she added in that two minutes, and it was a pause. It was like a break. It kind of broke the habit of coming home and just kind of you know, I'm tired, I'm just going to order a pizza or whatever it was. I don't necessarily know that she was doing that, but um, it gave her space in her day to think about how she wanted her evening to proceed. She lost 30 pounds and that wasn't the goal of it, but it happened really quickly. Okay. So the first step in changing your habits is to identify the habit you want to change or multiple habits, and then pick one, just one, and look at the reward. What are you getting out of it? So, so what's the cue? So for example, with the bottle of wine or the glass of wine, it's coming home from work, walking in the door, um, and then you're looking for the release perhaps. But you need to really, um, you know, if you're biting your nails, what is the reward? You really need to deeply look at what it is you're getting out of it. Because if you don't, when you add in a habit, you aren't necessarily adding, like it allows you to decide what habit you want to add in that's going to help replace the reward. So if you're looking for a feeling of release, maybe going for a walk in nature will provide that for you as a, a different outlet. Um, the next is honor your wisdom. So that kind of goes along with looking at what you're getting out of it, really looking at, you know, you know yourself and what your, um, you know, what your habits are and why you're doing them and kind of really intuiting that and, and figuring that out, sitting with yourself. The next one is adding new habits before removing bad habits. So I think I've gone over that one a few times. The next is creating small steps to reach your goal. And I'll talk about that a little bit more, but it goes with um, something called Kaizen. Do you guys know what Kaizen means? So it's a Japanese word that means small incremental changes over time for continuous improvement. 
change. And so it's something that they employ during war times in factories to start to increase production and reduce errors and injury. And um, it's extremely successful. And so the idea is that you small changes, little ones, as opposed to all or nothing, just a small change, like, you know, meditating for two minutes over time have big impact. Aim for a B minus. Perfection is going to leave you overwhelmed. And when you don't reach it, you're just going to feel discouraged and want to kind of throw everything in, right? So it's okay that you took some time off during the summer or things weren't perfect. I mean, we all do that, right? Uh, seasons change. Maybe your routine wasn't working for you because it was hot out and, you know, going for a run <laughs> when it's 30 degrees is perhaps not the right thing to be doing. So, um, you know, sitting and meditating perhaps is more of a cooling action, what your body needed. The other thing is to write it down and find someone who can hold you accountable. So I'm going to go through these steps a little bit more. Um, but I want you to look at habits to start your day right. So I picked four key habits and I have a little worksheet that I can send you after. It's a little tip sheet that just talks about um, habits to incorporate into your day. They're pretty easy, right? Hydrate, eliminate, move, eat green. That's all I'm asking you to do, like Kaizen, right? And, and pick one maybe if that, that sounds like too much for you. So why do we hydrate? So I, I want you to think about like, depending on how much water you drink in the day, when you wake up, it should be the first thing that you do. You really want to stimulate your bowels to empty completely. Um, and maybe not cold water, but a little bit more like tea water. Um, if you really don't like water, you can squeeze juice. But why do we hydrate? Because we want to clean out that system. We want to get the energy moving. And if you recall, when we wake up, usually it's downward energy when the kapha time of day. So that's between 6 a.m. and 10 a.m. Energy is moving down and we want that to happen so that we can feel so that we can be ready for the time when we're going to be um, moving along and getting things done, the pit of time of day. So we want to really take into account. Um, I think that like 80% of the Western world is constipated. <laughs> I won't ask people if they are today, but um, if, he, if that's you, that's something that is really important for you to get um, sorted. Take time. To sit on the pot. Um, if it's if if you're having trouble with it, drink more water. A lot of people think that they need to have fiber. Fiber is great for you. Fiber is great for gut health. Um, but you really need to have water. And so that's why we start with hydration. Hydration will lead to elimination. You drink enough water until you can eliminate. And I mean a complete bowel movement, which is about <laughs> yes, I'm going there. It's the size of a banana, roughly. Um, and just kind of, well, smooth. Um, so, you know, that's about a complete bowel movement. When that happens and you do it regularly, you'll feel like sparkly. Um, when you don't, you'll get things like migraines, allergies, because all of a sudden that energy isn't releasing properly. It leads to colon problems, um, all sorts of different things. If you're trying to lose weight, you need to eliminate, you need to get everything out before you take anything into your body. The next one is moving your body. So this can be with through breath, okay? So you can have a breathing practice. I like Wim Hof breathing. Right now it's kind of hot for that. But if you can do a breath practice, maybe some cat cows. If you have spine issues, I want you to do cat cows. I can send you, all of you, if you're interested, um, just a, a quick 10 minute video. And it's literally just cat cows. It opens up your shoulders. It opens up your hips and your whole spine. It gets the energy moving from your neck all the way down. And it's a great way to start your day. And it just warms you up. It's actually um, a video by a real, or it's a, a, a sequence developed by a really um, good um, Anusara yoga teacher, Naveen Makan, that I just, that I kind of, the the quality of the video wasn't very good. The sound wasn't very good. So I just kind of redid it and it's 10 minutes. You know, all I'm asking is 10 minutes of movement. If you don't want to do that, maybe you do some sun salutations. Maybe you go for a run, change it up, find what works for you. But when you're moving at the beginning of the day, 
really come in tune with the breath. Do some movements where you're noticing your breathing. So you're taking in some deep breaths. We have contact with the world through eating. So through that channel, through the breathing channel, the breath channel, and then through the skin. So the other thing I would say that I didn't put here is oiling, especially as we get into the fall, it will make all the difference. Um, but I won't talk about that too much. And the last thing is like eating green. So have a green smoothie if you can. Just have something green to start your day before you do anything else. I don't have a juicer and I make juice by like squeezing it through like a dishcloth. You know, I, I blend it with water and I squeeze it through and it's delicious. You can look up, there's all sorts of great recipes and you're getting basically oxygen all through your cells because it's just a fast way to get really good greens in. Um, you know, you take some celery, grapefruit or apple, some lemon and just run it through, um, you know, a blender and then just, and put some water in and then squeeze it and drink that. I, I think I'm going to do a green smoothie or a green juice talk one of these days where you have all of these different recipes and we can kind of share our recipes. But it's, it's just a great way to get fresh nutrients, the chlorophyll, uh, which brings oxygen deeply into your bloodstream and awakens your body. That's why we want to do it. It's going to energize you for your day. So, okay. I want you now, this is where we get a bit more interactive. I've done enough talking. What are you doing for you that, that you want to change? I want you to think about that. And if you can grab a pen and paper, I want you to make a list of maybe three different things that you want to change. What are three habits that you do, three habits that you do that you want to change? You don't have to share them with everybody, but I want you to write them down. You're going to share one, hopefully, because then once you've made your list, I want you to pick one habit that you want to change. And write that down. You can type it in the chat. Do you mean in the morning or just, just generally? Just generally. Oh, okay. It can be the smallest habit. So uh, an example would be um, one habit for me. Okay, getting up at five, meditation and stretching. Okay, Denise. Denise, what time do you go to bed? Um, about nine or 10. Okay, okay, great. Because I was gonna say, that's fantastic. Just make sure you're going to bed early enough because what we don't want to do what we're not doing here is getting up early and sacrificing our sleep right because then you're then you're moving into autoimmune disorder territory and and we don't want to go there um and stretching okay so so what are you currently doing denise what time do you um, currently get up? <laughs> so it's funny when you said about waking up at 3 a.m so I've had a real problem with waking up at three because I've lost all my habits that I had started uh, okay. for ages. And oh. um, lately, the last few weeks, I've been waking up every day at 3 a.m. and I stay awake till about five. Hmm. And instead of getting up at five, like I used to, I say to myself, well, I really need to get my sleep. So hmm. I'm going to sleep, you know, for a bit longer. And so I end up getting up at eight instead of at five. And so my whole day gets thrown off. Okay. And it, yeah. I, I read this book about why we sleep and I, I understand the importance of sleeping. Yeah. Um, but it was just kind of funny. Like I've made that, I've made sleep the priority, but now, then all my habits fell by the wayside. Right. Cause I was making that the priority and then I lost all my like, okay, I'm going to get up at five. I'm going to meditate. Um, you know, I had a few practices that I did and, and then I would at 6am from six to six twenty, I was doing this, uh, Miranda Esmond white, uh, classical stretch thing. Um, and it was just 22 minutes of stretching uh -huh. and that really set my day. And I don't know what happened last three months. I just haven't been doing it. 
I think because I, re- you know, read that book about the sleep and made that a priority. And okay. the 3 a.m. thing, like I would love to know why I'm getting up at 3 a.m. And I'd like to stop that. Why do you think it is? Well, like you said, uh, it's the vata time and my, my my body or my mind is going all over the place. Mm-hmm. Are you? I do kind of wake up and think about stuff like that. Okay. Okay. Are you in a particular period of stress right now? Uh, not really. Like, uh, I don't feel like, like I was, you know, severely impacted by COVID or it wasn't any major lifestyle change uh, in the last few months. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure why. Okay. All right. I think it um, might be because I'm a Pitta. I, I'm a Pitta and it's summertime. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I think it is. Cause, cause it sounds like it. Yeah. So, um, I would say, well, well, I would say that maybe try some yoga nidra at night. Oh, okay. Yeah. Something to kind of just like calm your system down and balance it before you fall asleep and help you to kind of, and, and maybe even spending some time to just, um, maybe met like well the, it can be the yoga nidra or it could be yoga nidra and a bit of meditation on your day like how you like closing the day off before you fall asleep like incorporating a bit of a routine and the other thing I would say is maybe rubbing some oil on your feet oh yeah I used to do that yeah so perhaps kind of just building in a little nighttime routine so I always so I mean I'm doing this talk on your morning routine but um to start the day right it starts the day before right <laughs> it's not just that yeah. day like so we we go to you know we eat dinner earlier we have an earlier lighter dinner so that we can sleep earlier so that we can then get up at a reasonable time right so so kind of thinking about well what is it that um you know i think probably the as the you know um air cools and things dry, perhaps you'll kind of come back to practices, but you'll need to, to think about. And, and that's the thing about like evaluating when that happens, that's okay. Change is okay. And things will come and they'll fall out. Like I was saying, I do the Wim Hof breathing. I'm also Pitta. So I can't like in the summertime, it's Pitta season. I'm doing this like heating breath. And then I'm like full of heat, (laughs) you know, it's like, oh, maybe that doesn't work for me. And I was resisting it. And then it kind of, you know, I clued in. And so taking time to kind of evaluate, well, why am I resisting it? You know, there might be a very good reason. I think you said you're a Pitta and we're in the like the heat of summer right now. So maybe thinking about some cooling or calming practices that you enjoy. Yeah, that's a good idea. I like that. Okay. What is, Marcy. The, what is the oil on the feet? I don't know that actually. Um, so oil is, um, you know, just rubbing a bit of like, are, if you're not allergic to nuts, almond oil is really nice. It's just calming. So oil, so where um, pitta is kind of heating and like hot or and vata is very dry, you, you can combat that with oil. So it's like a physiological response. Your body is, is absorbing the oil through the skin. So if you remember, I was talking about the different channels. So there's the breath channels, there's the mouth, um, your, um, da, 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 the food track, and then there's the skin. And so adding the, you know, adding oil all over the body is actually a calming, it, it elicits a calming response. Um, it's a soothing um, response for mammals. Like if you ever see dogs or cats, they lick their, their fur, right? Yeah. So for humans, putting oil on the skin and massaging actually is calming. And um, so even for someone who say has like wants to have kind of um, big meals, stretching the belly is actually elicits a feeling of like that feeling of fullness uh, elicits a feeling of calmness you know that satiation well if you you know incorporate oil massage that will help because it's it's soothing and calming so likewise with the nighttime um the the nighttime if you're kind of waking up at the vata time of night that means kind of the energy might be kind of dispersing your mind's going it happens to all of us and you know incorporating some oil into your diet and onto your skin will help with that sometimes Mm. it depends 
but tracking that and seeing, I would also say, Denise, maybe making a chart and seeing, you know, try this for seven days, do a little experiment and see what works, right? Okay, I put all, you know, oil on my feet, you know, for five days, I slept much better for those five days. And then I stop and then, you know, and you can track those things with a little chart. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a great idea. Uh, I just had my golden milk, my nightly golden milk delivered. Oh, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> so I was doing that for a long time during the winter. And, uh, and then I kind of fell out of the habit and, uh, I'm trying to get back on track, <laughs> right. especially today, actually, because we just had a visitors, they left today. So, okay. All right. Nice. Nice. I highly recommend golden milk. I got this sample at some yoga thing and it was so delicious and we mimicked it and it's so, so good. Yeah. If anyone's interested, I can send you, um, I can send you a really nice recipe. But it sounds like you've already got a nice one, Denise. Marcy. Well, my husband does. He doesn't oh. share it with me. Oh, he just makes it for you. <laughs> yes, he, he won't tell me the secret. Ah. <laughs> but please send the recipe. Okay, like I, will. I will. I will. Is that like a turmeric kind of based milk or something? Or turmeric based? Yeah. I can't remember everything that's in it right now. It's got a few different ingredients. And, and they're all different. But... Um, yeah, I'm just looking for my recipe book. I don't have it here. There is um, a package version available from the States, but I found it kind of expensive. Yeah, and I mean, Ayurveda tends to, um, I'm going to see if this book has it. If not, I have a really nice recipe that I use. Um, fresh is better, always. And it's not It's not very time consuming, but it's, it's, uh, it's warm. It's usually warmed and um, there's, you know, some fats and it's just, it's great if you have an earlier, lighter dinner and you feel like I'm kind of, kind of hungry, you know, but you don't want to have a big meal before bed. So you can have yeah. like, you know, a glass of golden milk and it's kind of calming and it will fill you up and it's um, soothing. So it, it's great for kind of allowing you to sleep without kind of getting your digestive system all woken up. Okay. Um, I have worksheets that I will send you if you're interested where you can choose one habit. So, um, and then think about what your strategy is to change your habit. So what can you add in? And then I want you to think about someone you can hold accountable and who that person is and how they can support you. So habits are linked to person, place, time. So you could, um, for example, um, set a time when you do something, but you can also have a person remind you, oh, tonight I'm not watching TV, <laughs> Sandy, that's my husband. <laughs> and, you know, so then, you know, I, like, I'll say to him, can you remind me that I'm not doing this? <laughs> I, this is a no Netflix night. Um, and, and so, you know, that kind of, that's a nice way to kind of, you know, bring in support from other people to keep your habits going. Mm -hmm. I've kind of gone over the, a lot of these things I want to, and okay. So I, I actually want to talk a little bit about this one because I, I said small steps to reach your goals. So really pick one or two things that you want to incorporate. Marcy, you were talking about how busy you are and it's hard to incorporate all of these different things, right? Like it's, you know, so you do one thing and what's the, I want you to think about with your habits, what's the smallest thing that you can do? that's going to help you reach your goals. Because if you look at this ladder here, it's really easy for her to climb up. But if you took away every third or every second rung, it would be a lot harder. She'd practically have to be a gymnast to get up there, right? That's the same thing with goals. We wanna make them as small as possible. And we want to not just think about the goal, but learn to love the routine and the strategy, right? Because it's back to that bedtime or the, the, uh, the bedroom, the messy bedroom. We want to build in habits. So I hated folding laundry <laughs> and I get these piles of laundry. Oh my gosh. I wanted a laundry fairy. Who wants a laundry fairy? I <laughs> it's just the folding. For some reason I had a block and then I decided one day, well, it's the smallest possible thing I can do. I can fold five pieces of laundry. 
And so now when I pass by my laundry, I can always, I always have time to fold five pieces, not the whole basket. I'm too busy. I'm doing a zillion things. And now my laundry's folded. Like it was amazing. It worked like a charm. That worked for me. Uh, but so it's looking at what the smallest possible step is, right? So for me, it was five pieces of laundry. <laughs> okay. What questions do you have? I guess, um, I guess, you know, like, how do you, I guess, strategies for um, getting back to, so when, so I, I think Denise, you talked about getting out of a habit, like uh -huh. strategies for getting back in and not feeling overwhelmed. You know, I think that's the, that's the piece that, uh, you know, yeah. we all get busy or something happens or you have a bad night of sleep or what, what have you. It's like, yeah. You know, forgiving yourself for that and then moving on. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. So, I have a fun one for that. Okay. <laughs> so it had to do with eating habits. And so I used to be crazy busy, my hair on fire running around, and I didn't have the greatest eating habits. And so I would eat something and I would just always make sure it was better than a chocolate bar. <laughs> you know, like something is better than nothing. Right. And so I would, I would just tell myself, you know, a spoon of peanut butter is better than a chocolate bar and not beat myself up for not eating a salad. Mm -hmm. Does that right. make sense? Yeah. So that's kind of the, so it's, it's all of these different things, Marcy. I think that makes, thank you, Denise. That's amazing. So, so that's kind of the idea of the Kaizen approach, right? Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, again, choose one thing, Marcy. Don't mm -hmm. choose 10. Yeah. Right. So what is the habit that you're going to incorporate? Mm -hmm. Are you asking me that? I am. <laughs> I'm putting you on the hot seat. <laughs> um, Have you decided or? No, I'm still thinking about it. Uh, okay. uh, you know, What's your I thought think... process. You don't have to, you don't have to have the answer right off the bat. What well, is I mean, I think I do. Answer? I think so. Like working from home, I do think. Yeah that basically I have used wine to transition from, not, from working to not working. Right. Um, and that's something that I definitely need to, you know, like I'm, I, I'm conscious of that. Sometimes I'm good at that. Sometimes I'm not good at that, you know? Yeah. And I think, you know, it's like figuring out, okay, what is that? What is that other transition that I can make that, you mm -hmm. know, uh, that is a, a healthier habit essentially. Mm -hmm. you know? Okay. So, so with the sticky habits, like wine drinking, for example, like those are uh, like, I think you have to give yourself some grace, first of yeah. all. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think we like, I think everyone's consumed too much wine. <laughs> over COVID, yeah. Right. So, so yeah. So I think you want to give yourself some grace and I think you need to rather than, I would say, rather than focusing on the wine and not drinking the wine, it's maybe before you do the wine, what is something that you can do? Yeah. What is something you can do to transition? Yeah. So what's, yeah. what, what do you think something like that would, that would be good for you? For me, I could probably go and walk my dog. Like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that, that's something that it, you know, kind of clears your mind. It's, 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 you know, I'm not able to do it as much during the day. So just stopping and then you know, and the dog always wants to go out. So it's like, you know, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I would say tonight, then, before you go to bed, envision, like visualize that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So visualize, okay, when I end my day, so you go through your day, and then before you do the wine, envision yourself, you know, getting the dog and putting the leash on and your shoes and every step, and then visualize the route and take that route and so go through all of the steps and think about how you're going to feel and the sights you're going to see yeah it's because i start i actually start my day that way too um right uh walking my dog and walking my dog for like a longer walk in the woods kind of thing right so that yeah. so for me that's kind of partly my morning habit i don't always get to do that because sometimes you get busy and you or you wake up later you have a shitty night's sleep um, you know, we don't have the energy to do that or the time. 
Um, but I mean, it kind of transitions me into like, so that's kind of how I'm thinking in terms of strategy is transitioning mm -hmm. into the day and then transitioning out of the day that way. Right. Yeah. And so if you, if you kind of, um, use that to bookend the day, then it's kind of, yeah, it's a transition out. And then afterwards, I mean, it just, it, it's delaying something, right. And it's giving yeah. you kind of that pause. Yeah. Right? Yeah. To maybe decide like how a you want glass to of wine as opposed to like a whole glass of wine or whatever, you know, and like that. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So I would start there and then habits are, I mean, so it's like, the, the more you do it, the more it gets ingrained, right? It's like, yeah. it's the same thing as when neurons are firing. It's that those patterns and we resist them because whatever, even if it's not good for us, we like what's familiar to us. And so, mm -hmm. so as you're starting it, I want you to visualize it and go through it. And then you do it and you, as much as possible, don't miss it. Like do it for mm -hmm. every day for, you know, a week. Mm -hmm. And then if you happen to miss a day, get right back on. Mm -hmm. Don't miss two days. Right. Right. And then the more you do it, it eventually becomes routine. It eventually just becomes, I just, I finished work. Okay. I'm going to take the dog for a walk. Mm -hmm. right? And it becomes something that you just automatically do. So you just have to keep doing it over and over and over again. And then it will become a habit, will become a routine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and then once it's routine, and I, I know that people talk about 30 days, I've heard 30 days, I've heard 60 days. I, I mean, I don't know how many people have done something, you know, for like 60 days or 200 days, and now you're not doing it anymore, right? Yeah. Like, I think yeah. it's, you know, I think it's individual. I think it's just about repeating them and kind of just getting that, that, that routine so that it feels familiar, so that your brain is used to it, so that you're used to it. Um, and, and you know, then it will stick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's more about number of times that you do it than it is about number of days. Right. So it's about really doing it over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes an unconscious action, which is what you want. And then once that happens, then you can think about, well, I want to incorporate this now, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe after the walk, I sit for two minutes, I med meditate, or I plan dinner, or I have a talk, like, you know, whatever it is, I'm, I'm kind of throwing things at you, and they're not going to be right, you have to decide what's going to work with, you know, your life. Mm -hmm. But not until that first one becomes routine, a habit. Yeah. And then it, I know it feels like, does it feel like it's not enough? Um, what do you mean? Well, because sometimes with someone who's really high achieving, <laughs> like you, you can, it can feel like, well, that's not enough. Like that's not, you know, but it is getting you where you want to go. And so kind of, you know, giving yourself some grace and remembering you want to be minus, right? We don't yeah. want it to be. Yeah. 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 That's that. I think that definitely is like, like that, that B minus <laughs> you know, approach like it does. Cause otherwise you, some, you set yourself up for failure in a sense like you know because no one can really achieve perfection you know all the yeah. time yeah 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 mm -hmm. all right okay that well that was a great question uh did i did i answer it for you enough yeah. or did you have anything okay mm -hmm. anybody else sorry what are you looking for uh well like any questions that you had on the talk or like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I've lost track. We, we were talking about the other stuff for so long. No problem. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'd really like to know how to not wake up at three in the morning. Yeah, well, I, I would try the yoga nidra, you know, and I would say, look, oh, at right. Yeah, no, yoga nidra. Yeah, yeah. I would look at your day, like I would go through your day and see what because when you're waking up in the middle of the night, it's something that's happening in the day that's that's kind of contributing to that, right? And so looking at what you can change in your day and looking at the patterns and changing those up. So I would track things like eating, times of eating, um, what time are you waking up, tracking that, um, you know, and, and noticing what days do you not wake up at three in the morning and what days do you wake up? Right. Mm -hmm. um, but but some simple things are kind of wind setting a bedtime routine. So even if you, you don't, you know, giving yourself the space to be able to wind down, making sure that you're getting some oil on your feet. And the yoga nidra is just it's a great practice for really um, 
have you have you done yoga nidra before denise yeah i have a friend that uh, teaches that so i okay. do hers once a week oh I, 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 that's another thing i haven't been doing <laughs> like yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, and then even kind of taking some time, it could even be journaling, right? That could be when you kind of go through everything is just kind of looking at your day and thinking about anything that's unresolved. So just giving yourself five, 10 minutes to just go through anything that, you know, you've, you were thinking about, or that's, you know, weighing on you through the day, kind of going through the steps of the day, maybe writing about it or, or just so you have that time to kind of start to process those things so that when you go into sleep, you can really sleep. And the other thing is, um, I keep, um, you can tell this is someone who wakes up in the middle of the night or who used to, <laughs> a journal or like a book with a pen by my bed. So if I wake up and I'm like, you know, if it's the pit of time of night, it's like, I have to do this, I have to do that you know, I'll write down a list. If it's the like, the stressy time of night, the vata time of night, usually um, I just do some breathing. I'll put my feet up. That's another thing you can do is put your feet up the wall. Oh, that's a great one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cause that, that's, you know, obviously that's gonna, and that, and you can do that in the middle of the night too. It will um, send the response signal. So it'll, it'll tell the autonomic nervous system to, or the parasympathetic nervous system to kind of relax and move back into rest and digest and kind of get out of the mind mode and just do some breathing. If you're really not falling back asleep, I would do that. And maybe rub some feet oil on your feet while you're doing it. Um, but that's if you actually wake up. And then there's also marma points um, on your head that you could, they work really well. So if you place uh, your palm right on your hairline and then draw your fingers can you see me yet yeah, back to where your your middle finger reaches there's a marrow point and you should feel it it's a little bit soft and just rubbing there in like a circular direction in one direction and then in the other and doing that for maybe two minutes will start to calm your system down I find that I, I go right to sleep after I do that Oh, that's a good one. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. All right. Well, uh, we're just, I'm just going to wrap up. So if you're interested, I can send you those worksheets to choose. Cause like I said, it's like, write it down. And then the checklist, just write your name or your email address in the chat and I'll send that to you. Um, and I, you know, if you're interested in having a strategy session with me, I'm doing free strategy sessions. It's like a one-on-one -on -one session with me. And so it's a really action-oriented session where we go really deep into what it is you want to do and what your goals are. And we look at what habits, you know, are not working towards your goals. And you come out with at least, you know, one to three actionable steps. So this is, you know, it's about 60 minutes and it's free. Um, you know, just as a thank you for taking the time to kind of join this talk. And if you're interested, I can put the link in the chat and you can just sign up. If there's a little questionnaire that I, I want you to fill out beforehand. Um, but I'll put it in here if I can find. Yeah, so I'll put it in the chat for you. And I hope that you will, will join. So let me see. Let me know if you can see it or when you can see it. Yeah. Okay. So does everyone know how to, you can copy the chat. Okay, Denise, great. I got your email address. Perfect. And Marcy, I think I have yours already. Yeah. Yeah, you do. So, yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Well, thanks so much for your time. I hope this was helpful, useful. Yeah, thank you very much. That was great. Wonderful. Okay, well, I'll, so I'll send you those worksheets. Um, I'll send you the, um, the, um, the milk, the golden milk recipe. And, um, and then I, I hope you sign up for a, a strategy session. Great. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay. Have a great uh, rest of your day or thanks. evening. Thanks. Okay, great. Thanks. I just want to catch that link before you close. Yeah, no, take your time. I'm trying to do this all on my phone and it's just a bit chaotic. Denise, I have your email address. I can send that link to you. Okay. It's, it's troublesome to do it on your phone. So it's no problem for me to do that. Yeah, my I got home and the laptop wasn't set up and whatnot. So 
No worries. No worries at all. It's been an interesting day. It sounds like it. Did the rain ever come? It did. It's storming out there like crazy right now. Is it? Okay. I have no yeah. idea. I'll send it across the lake to you. <laughs> okay. Thanks. <laughs> we need it actually. <laughs> I know we did too. That's why I'm very grateful. It's raining. Yeah, for sure. It's like night and day at the same time outside. It looks kind of weird. Huh. Crazy. Yeah, I'll it's a thunderstorm. So yeah. yeah. I, I love I actually love sitting on my porch looking at the rain when uh when I can. It's kind of cool. All right. Well, thanks so much, Denise. Okay, thank you very much. I, oh, I just saw it. Did you have slides? I didn't see the slides. I see oh, yeah, something I with did. questions. <laughs> oh, you know what? I, yeah, I, I had trouble. I was looking at you, not the slides. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, doesn't matter. <laughs> no, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter all that much. <laughs> no. Okay. Thanks so much for your time today, Christina. Awesome. That's my middle name, by the way. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. It's so wonderful. Oh, cool. <laughs> all right. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye.